Hey there, friends. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Tim Pandagis. It's early March and it's time to heighten our awareness of severe weather and the impacts that we see here, here locally in Southeast Texas. Today's topic for discussion is tornado safety. And we are in an area that sees a lot of severe weather. And sometimes that severe weather does spit out tornadoes as systems roll on through off the Great Plains out of the Rockies and they dive to the south and east. They bring up warm, humid air out of the Gulf of Mexico, unstable air, and that's fuel for storms to develop and we need a trigger. We need something to force that air to rise and it comes along a cold front, sometimes a dry line that fires off that severe weather. Now, usually the greatest risk for severe weather and the tornado threat is going to be closer to the center of the storm, the center of low pressure. We are still usually under that risk all the way down to the Gulf Coast and that's typically how we see our severe weather situations play out. So when there are tornadoes, how are they gauged? How are they rated? Well, it's something called the Enhanced Fujita Scale, and this is based purely off of the wind speeds that are measured either directly from radar data or afterwards, after the fact, a forensic meteorologist will go out and determine the wind speed based on the damage that is seen from the tornado. So it goes from EF0 all the way up to EF5. You can see EF5 are devastating tornadoes. All cause a lot of damage, but once you get up in over 200 miles per hour, it is unsurvivable. Now, usually we don't get EF4 or EF5 tornadoes here in Southeast Texas. However, just back in January, Deer Park, Pasadena area did see an EF3 tornado and that meant winds were anywhere from 136 to 165 miles per hour. Now, the damage patterns are also much different from what we'd see, say, in straight line winds in a severe thunderstorm. Those is, that's going to be blowing all in the same direction. Trees will all be blown down in the same direction. However, with tornado damage patterns, it's a bit more chaotic and circular. Forensic meteorologists will go out and determine what this path looks like, what the damage pattern looks like, to determine the path of tornadoes and where the damage is blown around in different directions. All right, tornadoes are obviously not all that rare here in Southeast Texas, but you can certainly see defined spikes through the calendar year of when we see our greatest tornado threat. And that happens in April and May. We get our springtime threat. Things quiet down a bit during summer. Doesn't mean we're completely out of the woods, but we see another secondary, even greater spike as we get into the late fall and early winter. And there's actually a growing signal for a January tornado threat. That's what we just saw this past January with the EF3 in Pasadena and Deer Park. So say you're out and about and you get a tornado warning on your cell phone or you're watching the news and it says you're under a tornado warning. What do you do? Okay, if you're at home, you want to get to the ground level or basement if available. I know a lot of homes in Southeast Texas do not have basements, so get to an interior room on the ground level. You're going to want to put as many walls between you and the outside as possible. That's why we say an interior room, maybe a bathroom. Get into a bathtub and cover yourself with blankets to protect yourself from flying debris. You don't want to be anywhere near any windows because windows will break if debris hits them, and that would mean flying glass, and that would cause injury. So stay away from windows if possible, get to that interior room away from all of those. Now, what if you're at work or in an apartment building? Well, again, you're going to want to stay away from any windows, get to the lowest level if possible. Best case, best place to be will be in an interior stairwell. That's going to be the most sturdy part of the building on the lowest level. And of course, it will be away from any windows and protect you from any flying debris. All right, the National Weather Service is actually going to give you a chance to try out your tornado setup in your tornado plan with your family, co-workers or classmates today, 10 a.m. Wednesday, March the 8th. This is going to be sent out on Twitter and NOAA, and this is going to be a tornado warning simulation. It is not actually real, but it will give you a chance to play out that plan. So take five minutes to refresh yourself on those plans at work, at home, and at school on where to go if a tornado warning is issued. So as we head into severe weather season, how do you stay ahead of the forecast to stay ahead of the weather so you know what's going on? Of course, pay attention to the forecast. Watch us here on KHOU 11. We'll update you and usually we can see the trend or signal for a severe weather outbreak several days in advance. Now, once the ingredients come into play and they're in motion, usually a severe thunderstorm or tornado watch will be issued. That's not saying that there's a tornado on the ground at this moment. That's saying 
the ingredients are there and it's favorable for tornadoes to develop. If in fact a tornado is either radar indicated or it is confirmed on the ground, a warning will be issued from the National Weather Service. And that means it's the real deal. Time to get to your safe place and enact your tornado drill plans that you're going to be practicing tomorrow across the state of Texas. And that means that what's happening now is going on and it's imminent and does bring a threat to the to the table there. I'm KHOU 11 meteorologist Tim Pandage. Stay tuned for the rest of the week as we continue to highlight severe weather awareness across Southeast Texas.